Hello! So in today's video, I wanted to do a new resin craft. I just got some new molds in the mail for some bookmarks, and I thought that would be an amazing opportunity to press some flowers, dehydrate some fruits, and see what kind of cool designs that we can get in these like really tiny rectangular bookmarks. They're going to have to be pretty simple, but hopefully I can make a bunch and see which ones really work well. For this project, I'm going to be using art resin. I'm really excited to be doing such a flat project because when I use art resin, my biggest problem is getting rid of all the little air bubbles. So hopefully I can pour the resin in really thin layers, get out all the air bubbles with my heat gun. I'm just going to be going into my yard, collecting some flowers, and trying to press them in the microwave just with using ceramic tiles and a paper towel. Pretty simple. I've never done it before, but I really hope it works because it would be the easiest way to dry flowers quickly. I consider buying a kit off of Amazon that helps you dry flowers, but I'm about saving money right now, so hopefully this works really easily and I've watched a few tutorials on it, so I think it might work out fine. I'm most excited about all the vibrant colors that we're going to be using today, so let's get right into it with a couple tester bookmarks with just a strawberry one and an orange one and then we'll move into a few more complex ones. So thanks for watching and subscribe if you like the outcome. So I found some wildflowers in my yard that I put in a book right away to press just so I could get the shape of what I wanted them to stay like when I put them in the microwave. This wasn't quite necessary though because you can put fully fresh flowers right into the microwave and they press beautifully and very pigmented. So right now I'm just outside looking for some cool flowers to snip and right here I see some really pretty purple flowers. So I think I'm just going to pick a few of these and I'm also going to be trying to press these in the microwave. Look here is some cute little white flowers too that I might get. I fold the flowers I collected in a sheet of paper and then wrap that sheet of paper with a paper towel. This is just to collect any of the moisture that comes out of the flowers once they go in the microwave. On top of these I place four small tiles to press the flowers down and I put them in the microwave for about one minute to a minute 30. I did a bunch of flowers in certain batches and I noticed that after the tiles heated up after a couple rounds, the flowers needed less and less time. and. There is a really fine line between burning your flowers and having them pressed to perfection with the maximum pigment possible. So it is a little bit tricky here, but the sweet spot is usually a minute 30 seconds, even for these really thin flowers. So I let my resin sit in hot water for about 10 minutes before I pour it. This is just to make it as liquidy as possible, which will get rid of a lot of air bubbles. So after measuring out my resin, I pour down two really thin layers to let some air bubbles start collecting that I can zap out with a torch or a heat gun. And I can place some dried strawberries and oranges in the first couple bookmarks. For the next four bookmarks, I decide to mix and match some of my materials. I love the purple flowers that we pressed in the microwave. I think they're the most vibrant flowers like I've ever worked with after drying them out, so I'm very excited about that. And I thought that would complement the red and the orange really nicely. It's like a very deep primary color palette, which is my favorite because primary colors are the best. So I let them sit for about six hours and then I give them another layer of resin just to make sure all the materials are covered properly and that the bookmark is sturdy and ready to go. So I never bought tassels for these bookmarks. I never really thought that far ahead, but I wanted to put something on them. So while the pieces were curing during that downtime, I wanted to make my own tassels just with similar color palette embroidery thread because I really like making these anyways. It takes a little bit of time, but I enjoy tying a million knots over and over and over again. So 
So after about 24 hours, it was time to unmold the bookmarks. They were still very flexible. They were really bendy, but they weren't tacky anymore and they were safe to touch. And it would take another day or two for them to firm up completely. The first two bookmarks that I made definitely had the most air bubbles in them. It wasn't awful, but I guess I just didn't let the resin heat up in the water as long as I did for the second batch. And even the second batch wasn't perfect either. So it's something that I definitely have to work on. I'm still very happy with how these turned out and they will definitely be used. Possibly gifts, possibly on my Etsy shop. My next batch of these will definitely go on my Etsy shop, so stay tuned for that. So the last few steps for these guys was to trim down the excess resin with some scissors and then use my Dremel to smooth out the sides completely. After doing all the sanding to clean up the edges, I just used some rubbing alcohol to make the scratches disappear as much as possible. This worked alright, but I feel like there might be other better options out there, like maybe using a really fine sandpaper or investing in some certain type of polish. But the final step is to drill holes into the bookmark to put the tassels on. So this is how my fruit and flower resin bookmarks turned out. I'm getting slightly better at getting rid of all the air bubbles in art resin, but it will take a little bit more time I think, and I can't wait to try making these again and try using different colors and just see what else sprouts from my yard that I can now dry in the microwave. But anyways, thanks for watching and have a good one.